Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of The Extra Point. I'm here with Zach yep. and Callie. I finally got it right after three years. Yeah, just three, just three <laughs> years. That's all it took. Let's, uh, let's talk football for a minute. No, let's um, not. Anybody watching any high school games? I did not. So I was reading Twitter and seeing some of the yeah. scores coming out. So the one I was most focused on was the 4A matchup between Marshall County and Greenville. And uh, unfortunately, Greenville won that one. So well, and, and, and I saw some, you know, and this is like two years in a row now, Oakland's had to travel, I think, to Maryville to play them and lost again and you know it was a trick play Maryville pulls out mm -hmm. um i don't know i think Maryville even had lost i don't understand why oakland had to travel to Maryville to can you can you shed your light on that uh i honestly haven't been paying it? attention to 6a because i don't have a team invested in 6a so i wasn't or how they seed these teams or who determines who's home and, yeah because i thought oakland was the number one team in the state and then they have to travel. That make a lot of sense. Yeah, that doesn't make sense at so, all. But yeah. I, I don't know. I, I haven't covered six A, so I have to kind of uh, keep up with it. Now. So I'm not going to pretend like I have all the knowledge. <laughs> well, that doesn't like he does all the other time back in the newsroom, does he? <laughs> yeah, no comment. All right. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk high school action. One A, South Pittsburgh lost. Lost. Yeah, um, that was shocking. But well, it was a tough team. Uh, yeah. But Cornersville, which is right out of Lewisburg, I think, um, mid-state team won. So they'll take on Greenback uh, for the championship. So we're going to root for the Middle Tennessee teams. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think so. Um, Tyner will take on Union City for a championship. So neither one of those are from Middle Tennessee. Um, Alcoa, which has always been a tough school. Um, takes on Covington for the championship, which is actually our new publisher is from Covington. Yep. Um, so I'm sure he'll be rooting for Covington. Uh, 4A Marshall, you just said it, lost. Um, however, they will take on Springfield, which is just north of Nashville, so that's another mid-state team in, in 4A action. Uh, 5A Nath Knoxville Catholic versus Beach, and Beach is just right out of uh, Hendersonville, yep. um, one of actually my rival schools because I went to Hendersonville. Um, oh, so go beach to win that one and well, oakland hmm. well, we got a ths alum who's uh, coaching over at knoxville catholic so oh, do we oh uh, yes know steve matthews and oh, okay uh, coaching for knoxville catholics now yeah he used to actually coach for moore county uh, yep. a few years back um but i'm still going to root for the middle tennessee team sorry steve <laughs> um 6a oakland lost once again we said uh, lost by a trick play throwback to the quarterback wide open um, so, uh, but Cane Ridge won, um, and Cane Ridge isn't a isn't an old school. I'm not sure they've been around very long, um, but they will be playing for a championship versus Maryville next week. So good luck, Cane Ridge. Um, we wanted to shout out to anybody local. I know you guys have got some shout outs. We're going to talk basketball for a second. So if you got a shout out or just want to go straight into talking about football, you got some go good ahead. football news uh, with your your. Yeah, well, okay. we'll start out with since we were just talking about high school. We had seven Tullahoma High School players who were named in the all-region football team, including Nick Barstad and Amari Burks, who were selected as player of the years. Uh, Nick Barstad was selected as the region's offensive player of the year, and Amari Burks was selected as the uh, uh, athlete of the year for the region. So terrific on those guys for that. That's 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 great, especially from where this program has been the last couple of years. So, yeah. So that, that's a that's that's amazing. And then on the basketball floor, there's always good news here in Tullamo. We got three, two, three and one teams at the high school right now, so that's pretty impressive. Boys are coming off of a 58 to 50 win over Moore County last night. Fortunately, the girls lost their first game of the season last night, but Moore County is a really good girls girls basketball team. Then on top of that, you got Motlow, who's ranked number nine in the country, who's uh, six and one on the season and will host number 18. Georgia tonight, Georgia Highland tonight. That'll be an exciting matchup. And then at middle school level, we got the West Boys basketball team continues to dominate. They're seven and zero on the season, coming off of a win wow. at Warren County. So go Bobcats! Yeah, it's been right. impressive so far. So at least there's good news because the Tullahoma basketball hasn't really been too chipper no. the last couple of years. No, but there's plenty of room for excitement or plenty. Of Look at it, and it's exciting now. So, right. yeah. um, you wanted to talk briefly about uh, Franklin County, I think. Yeah, uh, Rebel Girls uh, won Tuesday night over Smyrna, 82-32, puts them at three and one on the season. So there's a Rebel team that's doing well. The boys are struggling a little bit this season, lost uh, to Smyrna as well. They're one and three on the season. Huntland uh, Girls also three and two on the season. They won over Whitwell. 
uh, the boys uh, who were winless as of right now um, fell also to Whitwell. So, uh, might make for an interesting matchup, the girls versus Tullahoma. Uh, yeah. They scheduled to play down the road. Um, they will be. Yeah. 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 So, that'd be two, three, and one teams um, right now. Um, and I think it would be a rivalry. Yeah. Yeah. Basketball is different. It's not the 1A, 2, 2A, yeah. 3A, 4A. Yeah. It's still what, 1A, 2A, 3A? Or, yeah, you still got the the triple A in, in that one. So, um, so and Tullahoma is two A. Tullahoma is District A triple A. A triple A in basketball and uh, I don't Franklin know. County is uh, triple A triple A as well. They're yeah. in the same district. So they will match up, and they will most likely have a home and away game. Then, if that's yes, the case. yeah, they'll so, meet up twice. Um, that'll be a good good matchup. Good game to go see when uh, the Rebels come to town or when the Wildcats come to Franklin County. All right, let's um, let's just skip over and start talking college football. Now, do we don't we have picks to talk about? Yeah, we have to talk picks. We absolutely do. You can't you can't run and hide when you've had a bad week, Joe. All right, I think y'all drugged me last week. Before <laughs> Uh, no, you wanted to be different. Yeah, well, that didn't work. Well. Yeah, you saw Callie that. went five and three. Zach went five and three last week, and I went three and five. Three and five. Anyway, by going three and five, I uh, gave the lead to Zach now at fifty four and thirty three. Um, I'm at fifty two and thirty five, and Callie's one behind me at fifty one and thirty six for the week. So we're gonna get to picks in a minute for this week. We got a lot of good, to basically conference championship yep, games going. Pretty on. much. Uh, let's talk the well. I, I would almost say this not quite as big, but let's talk Auburn beat Alabama first. Um, Zach, that was one you picked. Callie, me and you took Alabama. Yeah. Um, it was a painful game to watch. I mean, Auburn pretty much just dominated or pretty much controlled the game from the start. I mean, they gave up the lead once whenever Alabama took a fourteen to ten lead, but they immediately answered back and then just never. Gave up the lead at that point again, so it was really Auburn heavily dominated game for the most part. Well, I saw somebody post something on Facebook. A friend of mine said that you know he wanted to hand it to Auburn that Alabama um, just didn't have enough gas in the tank. And my comment was, I don't think they ever filled up. <laughs> uh, what did you see in the game? I mean, you know, Auburn definitely you know had something to prove, and they went in there and took care of business. It was I thought it was a great game. Yeah. I mean, okay. you look forward to football games like that where it's not just a blowout. And it, it was, you know, everybody, I don't care what kind of fan you were, you probably tuned in to at least 10, 15 minutes of that game. Mm -hmm. That's what you watch during for college football uh, during the year. So, um, what I enjoyed was all the memes afterwards. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alabama fans. <laughs> well, I mean, they're not perfect. They're going to lose the game. Uh, you like to see them lose to a rival. And, and then, you know, and this game has gone to bite them in the butt twice now in the last yeah, three right? years. Yeah, um, I feel we as Tennessee fans, we kind of feel their pain with Vanderbilt. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get to that one in a minute. Um, you know, I, I thought it was a good game. It seemed like at the end, it was just like I mean, the two mistakes, the, 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 the snapping the ball, I and mean, yeah. they just totally kill them. Um, it just did not look like the same uh, Alabama team. However, this Auburn team, you know, they've only got two losses on the year. They lost to Clemson away, and they lost to LSU in LSU. Um, they were both close games. Yeah, that, all, that LSU one, they just, they just lost the lead. So, yeah, and so, yeah, I mean, they were both in close games, and we'll talk the top four here in a minute because Auburn now is squeaked into that top four. Um, let's talk UT football for just a second. Um, <laughs> we have a coach. As of Sunday around two o'clock, right? Yes, yeah, allegedly, allegedly had a coach. Uh, yeah, allegedly. As of Sunday around eight o'clock, we didn't have a coach anymore. No, no. So I saw you posted something. Why don't you speak briefly about it? I, I mean, there's so many reasons why he was not a, a good fit. Um, obviously, there's the more the more vocal. Let's just say there's more vocalized ones than others, or ones that played well better on the the news feed because. I think the, the media, and we are part of me, but I think the media picked and chose, picked and choose what sounded best for their. I don't hundred percent know that. I mean, social media is a giant bully. Yeah, it is. It gives it, a lot of people a voice. Yeah, and I think that. But I think there was. I think Vols fans have been targeted just for that whole same dusky thing. There was more to their backlash than just saying just just that association. 
with that. The fact that nobody lost the fact that his issues at Rutgers, even though he had that what eleven and two season. Um and also when he was at Tampa Bay, there's a bigger there's a bigger picture. Well, I saw stuff out there, but it's always a he said, she said. Well, I will, absolutely. Or coaching 10-year-old girls, you know, I never get the complete story on this side. And this yeah. Side. She's yeah. Just somewhere in the middle. Speaking of social media, though, does it, I mean, does that, does it, do we see a change in hiring a coach nowadays? I mean, is there, that, it seemed to me like it all changed on public opinion. Yeah, it really did, and I don't know. I don't know if this is the way that college football is going to be from now on, if social media is going to have that large of an impact or not, or if this was just a certain situation that, you know, where they just wanted to gauge the reaction first. That's what somebody brought up to me is that maybe they released this to, you know, sort of gauge it. Gauge See, you got stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it wasn't the best PR move. No, it wasn't. Uh, no, that was an experiment. I'm kind of surprised the athletic director's not looking. Uh, I would well, like to see that. Well, you believe some of those other reports yeah. that might be in the works. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. he chose to go the path of hiring. He put out there, I read a story, said, hey, I don't need to hire a PR firm to help me find a replacement. That's what <coughs> the last athletic director did, and then he mm-hmm. charged a strong debacle. Well, I think, when we got there too. yeah, and I think, though, uh, he's, though, known for being my way or the highway type of an AD. And so I think he this, he wanted that very much to be his decision. Well, then you can have all the blame too, <laughs> uh, because these went and made it a. Uh, is boy, this is a this is a dumpster fire. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it was, That doesn't seem like it was his way. <laughs> it seemed like the. Well, I think he wanted it to be until the political. Got over. <laughs> well, I think I think even with the fans' reactions, he's playing being, Robert. <laughs> well, I think even the fans' reactions being what they were had not uh, political had not political the representatives got involved oh, yeah, yeah. in it. The mayor, from what I understand, called. Congressman. Uh, congressman uh, had called and weighed in on, put their two cents. I don't think it had gotten to that level. Because, I mean, if he's really listened to the fans, uh, an interview would already been made with T. Martin by this point. Because that's what the fans are ultimately wanting right now and the former Well, players. I don't think T. Martin is the coach. He, he just does not have the experience yet. I mean, Sure, put him in there, I guess, if you want to, but he hasn't led a big college yet. He's been a quarterback. Yeah, yeah he, I mean, he, that's he's right. Young, he's, he's, also a a, he's also a favorite. Joe Biddle, oh, I wish. I saw, I saw it. I didn't yeah. get a chance to read it's it. A gra- it's a great read of talking about who who your next coach needs to be. It needs somebody who relates to the team, is good for recruiting. Right. Yeah. Well, let's get off UT's back because um, – Apparently, everybody in the SEC has been on UT's back considering they basically just had their worst yeah. season ever. They went 0-8 in conference play. Mm-hmm. They really – you come in there and win one SEC game next year. You've done a good yeah, job. Yeah, you are here. Right. Um, anyway, let's talk uh, Let's talk about <laughs> more. Uh, the latest polls came out in um, the top four uh, for the playoff right now. It's Clemson, Auburn, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin. Of course, that could change with this week's games um, and when we make our picks. Um, Zach, what did you – I mean, you said you thought that was right. Yeah, I think they nailed it exactly right. At this point, I think that's the top four. Now. Well, I mean, why does Auburn deserve just to – I mean, I know why they do, I guess. Why do you think they do? Because they're playing for the SEC championship. Yeah. Well, and they beat and, number one Alabama yeah. and beat number one Georgia. Yeah. Well, exactly that, too. You know, you look why at does two, Clemson deserve it? Because they're playing for the ACC championship. Yeah. They lost to Syracuse. Yeah. Gosh, they early in the season, though. And we all know that early it, season losses don't hurt you as much as late season that's losses. That's bull crap. I mean, you, it that, is what it is. But so that's Alabama, that's gets, Alabama gets screwed because they lose to the, one of the number one teams in the country. Yeah, but Alabama's schedule has not been, I don't know. Yeah, but they've been dominating teams. So, I'm, I'm not I'm not advocating for Alabama to win. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm advocating. Well, Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma. Ohio State always managed to squeak in there somehow, and I feel like they're the most one of the most overrated teams, and they always managed to squeak into the final four somehow. So, well, I think Clemson's been somewhat tested. They played an Auburn team, but Florida State's not that strong of a team this year. Louisville's not that strong of a team this year. Mm-hmm. So I'm not that impressed with their schedule. Um, I don't think it's fair that Alabama automatically gets knocked out, but they also aren't playing for an SEC championship. So, but anyway. You got to win the game. Who's your top four? 
I, I'm with Zach. I agree. I, I feel it's spot on. I like this top four right now um, because it's so not the the norm, I guess. We've shook it up quite a bit. Now, the only question in my mind is how good is Wisconsin? Yeah, exactly. That's the only question where none of us really had is how good is Wisconsin? Well, exactly. Unfortunately, they play in like the, the west of the Big Ten, and that's not been the strongest conference. No. Yeah. I think some things are going to shake out this week, but then you're going to have people griping. you got Clemson versus Miami. Um, you know, what if Georgia beats Auburn? You know, now yeah. Georgia's like, hey, we're back. You well, know, this is where you – Miami beats Clemson. Yeah, well, this They're is where you expand out. your playoff, and that way you – Ohio State, that'd be the easiest. Ohio State beats Wisconsin. Ohio State's very – you know, right. Yeah, well, that's why you got to expand your playoff. I mean, it, it go back to a couple of years ago when it actually was almost better to not play for a championship at the end of the season yeah. because you don't have to risk the loss. Right? Exactly. So, but anyway, we're going to talk picks for a minute. I guess this is where I'm going to make my dramatic seven and zero. Oh, is this where we're going to come back and come to victory? All right. Oh, whatever. Maybe stunk it up last week, and probably why Mark Rick got let go of Georgia. Oh my goodness! <laughs> we had that one loss. That's what hurt. <laughs> Well, it's the one loss to the team that you're supposed to beat that should have beat Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. but so you can say that about everybody who's gotten knocked off or surprised. Well, I, I do. I don't doubt it. But That's why they play the game, you're Joe. At, you're That's at why the they finish play the game. Line. You're at the finish line. It's time to finish, and they didn't finish. No. They went to Pittsburgh and got beat. Clemson versus Miami. Callie, you got some heavy words for me. Who do you think is going to win? Well, I think Clemson wins this one. I I was shocked at Miami, but you know they played close all year long, and they finally got get caught up with them. But I Clemson's agree. defense, I think, is going to take care of this. I agree, Clemson's defense, and I think again they're still trying to prove themselves coming off that Syracuse loss earlier this year, and I think Miami proved they are vulnerable. So I'm on Clemson. I, I kind of agree with you. I think Miami's played in some close games. I mean, I think playing in close games helps you win them, mm-hmm. but they played in close games against teams that they probably shouldn't have played in. Yeah, they look better as of late, but Clemson is a very strong team, and I'm going to take Clemson in this one as well. All right, move on down. Zach, you said this was the game that you didn't, weren't sure about, Ohio State versus Wisconsin. And I'm still not sure about it now that you put me on the spot. You know, two weeks ago I probably would have said Wisconsin wins this game, but then I see what happens whenever uh, JT Barrett gets hurt in that Ohio State Michigan State game and or Michigan game, and the <coughs> backup quarterback looked really good against Michigan and pretty much ran at will against uh, Michigan. So I'm going Wisconsin still on this one. I still have my question marks on how good Wisconsin is, but I would not be surprised if Ohio State yeah. pulled. We got the win. And I'm going to put Callie down for Wisconsin because she hates her Meyer and Ohio State. That's right. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but I think oh, Wisconsin has a lot to prove. And I feel like there was a couple of plays. For the Michigan-Ohio State game, came down again to a couple of plays. And, and I feel like Michigan, yeah, minus those couple of plays, could beat them. Easy. Well, now look at it this way. If Ohio State doesn't, it, it's kind of a must win for both teams. It you know, is, yeah. If Wisconsin loses, they're out of the playoff. If Ohio State wins, You're they might back get into in the playoff top. I'm going Ohio State. Ooh. All right, let's go. This is going to be a weird one. But Memphis versus UCF. Now, I watched that UCF South Florida game the other day. It was a good mm-hmm. game. It um, was. Uh, so, Memphis versus UCF. Two actually strong schools. Yeah. Um, Callie, what do you think? I'm going, to go with a, I'm going to go with Memphis on this. I just have a feeling. Have a feeling. Why well, you got the feeling on Memphis? I got the feeling on UCF. So. <laughs> I'm going to go Central Florida. And I, and I you know, it's hard to I talk. We don't get to see these schools play a lot, mm-hmm. but Memphis can put some points up. Yes, they can. They did um, that against UCLA earlier this year. Um, I think the, the and they had a tough test this past week against uh, the team they played. Um, can't remember if it was maybe Houston, but anyway, um, I don't usually do this, but I'm going with Memphis. I think there's a little bit of uh, well, if we got an in-state team still still kicking around. Yeah. We need to support the in-state team. <laughs> yeah, not the Amish for Houston. Yeah. All right, Stanford versus USC. Stanford was one that kicked me in the butt last week, so I took another game. Stanford didn't do well early in the season, playing very well as of late. They are. Um, I think Stanford wins this game. 
This is another one I was torn on. I'm going with USC. There's something just tells me to go Trojans in this one. They have disappointed me so many times this year, though. I know. But they have me, too. Stanford, it, but they do. They play the close. Well, it was close at times against Notre Dame. I got to go with Stanford. It's kind of scary. It is kind of. It is a lot to All right, we'll put, uh, we'll put Cali on the hot seat this time. Oklahoma versus TCU. I would have. I'm going to have to go with Oklahoma because of where they sat in, sat in things, and they need that win. have to have that win stay in the top four. Um, what do you think? I think Oklahoma. I think they dominated. I mean, the hardest thing to do in sports is – or one of the hardest things in college football is to beat a team twice in the same season. But I'm still going Oklahoma. This one I think they showed a lot the first time that they – whenever they just dominated. <coughs> so I'm going Oklahoma. Um, I think it's kind of hard to go against Oklahoma. Baker Mayfield's playing some of his best football. I'd say he's a shoe in for the Heisman. Um, and even if he loses this game, he'll probably still get it. I'm going to go Oklahoma on this one. All right, this was the weird one. Um, Fresno State, Boise State. Probably two teams we haven't watched all year long. Yeah. Nope. But Boise State's always up there in the top. Um, Fresno State has a pretty good record. Um, and I, I wrote add it may be an actual neutral site. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either. <laughs> so, you no, Boise, I I'll say Boise State. Callie's going to go Boise State. She's just guessing. She I am just guessing. I haven't seen these guys play all year. Well, whenever I made my pick, it was based on that. I thought this was going to be at Boise State playing on oh, the just the gonna be. <laughs> I'm still going to go Boise State as well just because of the history of that program. Because I'd already you put, have to go to Boise State and play on that smurf turf. Is yeah, and I'd already put my Jade out by Boise State. So he was like, I'm just going to go with Joe's like Stanford. Uh, <laughs> yeah, All right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right um, so I'm taking Boise State as well. Okay, Georgia versus Auburn. Once again, it's hard to beat a team twice in the same season. It is. Um, but Auburn dominated Georgia. Um, they did. So, Zach, why don't you start with this and stuff? I'm going to go still with Auburn in this one. You know, Auburn still has the question marks about its running, uh, first string running back being out. Um, so, I don't know how they will be health wise, but I still think they have enough to beat Georgia in this one. So Virtually at home. It is, uh, it is exactly. It's going to be playing in Atlanta. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going with Auburn. I just feel like they ultimately have more of the momentum. Their defense. Uh. And, and I agree with you. I think that Auburn's got the momentum. Um, but I do think Georgia was embarrassed. I think they have something to prove. Mm -hmm. And I think it's virtually a home game for Georgia. Um, I'm looking for a letdown from Auburn. Ooh, I'm going, gonna pick the upset. All right. I am going to pick the upset. Especially even after Georgia got beat down. But Kirby Smart isn't dumb. No. Oops. And um, I think he'll have a game plan, and, you know, I, I can see this coming down to a one-point game. So, anyway, let's talk uh, Marcus Mariota. Now, I've not been ultimately impressed with Marcus Mariota the last few games. Mariota throws two more interceptions again, helps he to get Tennessee in a hole. He's not at 100%. They though. really they really didn't. They really probably didn't deserve to even win the game on Sunday. No, it was a terrible game. I yeah, saw, I saw like a lot of it. Months. It was. Um, if, if Indianapolis doesn't basically hand them seven points on the four-yard line, yeah, um, I, I don't think they win it, and I think their playoff aspirations are over. I uh, know a win is a win, but once again, Especially I wasn't Indiana, impressed. Um, let me, I have a question here. What is up with the Titans' offense and their run game, number one, Cali? Their offensive line doesn't seem – Yeah, it just seems lackluster. I mean, like I said, it was it – was, from what I saw, it was sloppy at times. But I, you know, go I back. mean, they put it together at the very end. Yeah, well, then they and that's been their kind of their calling card all season. They do it whenever they need to do it. Exactly. <laughs> they only well, they put enough gas, you know, they get a, they just get to the finish line. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers box yeah, the last right? couple of seasons. That's exactly what it is. Just do enough to get the win. So I don't, don't know. And well, then, and then, they, yeah, like the Steelers blew out the Titans, and then last week they struggled against a like, Green Bay team that's the back of quarterback. Yep. So. It's just. I think, well, that is. Is that good. just the NFL? I think that's just the NFL. I think so, too. But, I mean, and I, but I, back to Mariota, you know, he's not playing at 100% either. So I give him kind of credit for coming back like he has and getting his clock clean at times and getting up and 
keep on going. I mean, interceptions doesn't speak well for you, but he, he does get some props from me for that. So, Zach, you got anything you want to add? No, but I would like I. I've been a Mario defender this whole year, but yeah, those those interceptions he threw against Indianapolis were pretty pretty miserable throws. So I cannot quite figure out why this offense hasn't clicked whenever yeah. it really needs to. It needs to just come out and dominate Houston on Sunday. If it does that, I think that will relax quite a bit of people, especially against Houston's defense. I know Houston's defense is missing JJ Watt, but still, I well, still think Houston's defense is pretty solid. And they yeah, they played very good. Jadavian Clowney um, was a beast. Oh, the other day I watched some of that game. Um, and, you know, I, I think it all goes back to the fact that last year one of their strongest attributes was their run game yep. and their offensive line. And right now their offensive line isn't – I don't know if it's DeMarco Murray. I mean, you know, Derrick Henry was getting it done. Yeah, he was. So I don't know if Derrick Henry's going to be promoted to the number one tailback. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's the combination of both of them being able to smash and dash and 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 get big chunks of yardage. Um, anyway, they play uh, Houston this week. I'm going to that game. Are you? Yes, I have tickets. I will probably see you there because I just got approved for a credential, so I'm probably going to be down there on the sidelines. So. Well, I won't be on the sideline. Well, that's okay. I'll I'll say say I won't hi. even be there. If I pull out my little press pass, can we get done? Yeah. yeah. I'll say hi. <laughs> All right, appreciate it. Um, anyway, uh, the Predators, let's talk to them real quick when we get out of here. Um, as of last night, they won. Um, over the last 11 games, there are nine wins, one uh, one loss, and one overtime loss. Mm -hmm. um, it's very impressive. Yeah. Since November, there was a trade back in early November. Yes. Um, the Predators are 10 wins, two losses, and one overtime loss. So they only have one more game left in November. Overall, they're 15, 6, and 3. So you can see they started the season, what, 5, 4, and two, yeah, and they've gone on this impressive run. So, um, you know, they have a game tomorrow night um, against Vancouver, um, and then I think they're going to be hitting the road for a little while. Give you a chance to go see a Fred. Yeah, absolutely. Do it. Um, I know. I think you maybe watched it, or you just see the highlights. Just saw the highlights. So it was a good game last night. They beat. I watched Chicago. a little bit of it. I did. We they beat the Chicago it. Blackhawks three to two last yeah. night. So, uh, with that being said, I guess we're done for today. Um, you can always reach Zach at reach me on Twitter at Zach Birdsong. You can always get in touch with our favorite Callie at uh, NewsGal27. And we appreciate you folks joining us each week. We hope you have a good weekend.